Hello, Parkwood family and Parkwood friends. Uh, we trust that you're doing well today. I just wanted to come by and, and uh, bring you a quick word of devotion today and make uh, a couple of announcements uh, this Friday. Uh, let me first of all mention that uh, we just wanted to let you know and be aware that uh, one of our very own, Ben Parker, uh, has uh, gotten engaged recently to Rebecca Thrift. Rebecca is uh, Jonathan and Melissa Thrift's uh, oldest daughter, and they were here just a few months ago uh, during the Bible conference. Um, and uh, But anyways, Ben and Rebecca have just recently got engaged. Uh, they are planning on uh, getting married on July the 31st of this year. And so I uh, just wanted you to be aware of that. They wanted you to be aware of that. Let's pray for them. And uh, if you've got their information, reach out to them maybe and tell them congratulations. But surely, uh, certainly let's pray for them and uh, for their uh, wedding and for their marriage. And uh, Ben and Rebecca, if you're watching this or if you do watch it, we, we do wish you a congratulations from your friends and family at Parkwood Baptist Church. Uh, listen, I was uh, going to make mention of this. Uh, there's, If you have Netflix, um, there's a movie that's been released on Netflix called The Case for Christ. And uh, I've watched it, Lord, and I have watched it. It is tremendous. I would highly encourage you to uh, gather your families together if you get a chance and uh, watch The Case for Christ. Uh, it's uh, based upon a true story a man by the name of Lee Strobel. I'm sure you have heard of Lee Strobel. Maybe you've even read his book, The Case for Christ. That's what the movie is based upon. Uh, but you know, if you know me, you know that I have a love for apologetics. Um, I have a love for textual criticism. Uh, I have a love for, for just the reliability of God's Word. And there is so much evidence and, and so much proof uh, for the New Testament and in particular God's Word is true. It's really overwhelming. And that's what this movie is about. It's called The Case for Christ. And so uh, it's on Netflix. Uh, I would recommend you watch that. It'd be a tremendous, tremendous movie for you uh, to watch with your family. I'll remind you that the office is closed. You can still reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to Monica and Caitlin via email, but certainly reach out to me via phone call, text message, whatever's best for you. And uh, whatever we can do for you in these days, we want to do that. We're praying for you. We miss you. And uh, we love each of you. Well, it's Good Friday. Uh, it's the traditional day that we celebrate uh, the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, upon Calvary's cross. Now, I understand that there's certainly argument for, for that it could and maybe have taken place on Wednesday or Thursday. But uh, tradition tells us that we... We celebrate it today, and so we uh, want to look at uh, the cross and think along the lines of the cross this morning. I'm in my office, and I was just reading some. Uh, I've got my Bible open here, and just reading some, and my my reading brought me to 1 Samuel chapter number 18, and uh, a verse of Scripture really jumped out to me. You know the story of of David and, and his journey, if you will, to the throne and all that that involved with King Saul. And you know the story of David's relationship with his best friend, Jonathan, who was King Saul's son. Chapter 18 is the chapter that deals with the covenant that the uh, two young men made. And listen to what uh, verse number uh, three says. It says, then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. You know, really since history began, human beings have practiced the blood covenant. Uh, two individuals who loved one another, who were committed to one another, who, who wanted to enter into a trust with one another would each uh, cut an incision upon their wrist, their right wrist. And uh, the blood would begin to flow and those two individuals would take their wrist and they would put their wrists together to, 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 to mingle together their blood. They join their right hands. They would lift their hands in the air together towards heaven. They would take a solemn vow as, as blood brothers. They were uh, close, closer than fleshly brothers, if you will, and their lives would henceforth be mingled. They were now entered into a covenant. I want you to understand that the blood covenant is so important for you and I. Well, if you learn the blood covenant, friend, the blood covenant will radically and dramatically change your life. 
All of the Bible is about a blood covenant. The Bible is divided into two parts. You know that. We've studied it recently in the book of Hebrews. It's You have your Old Testament and you have your New Testament. And if you'll remember, in our studies, we learned that the word testament and the word covenant are the same word. And so your Bible is made up of an old covenant and a new covenant. Remember when the Lord Jesus instituted that wonderful feast that we call the Lord's Supper? He said something like this. He said, uh, this cup is the new covenant, the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Uh, friend, all of the, the, the promises in God's word are really covenant promises. The Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing in Psalms 25, that the secrets of the Lord are with those that fear him, and to those will he show his covenant. Well, in the life of David, we see the blood covenant in action. You know that young David was God's anointed king next in line. Well, Jonathan was King Saul's son, and so he was next in line, if you will, for the throne. But Jonathan knew that the throne didn't belong to him, but that the throne belonged to his friend David. He loved David as his own soul, the Bible says, and so he yielded his life over to David. He entered into a blood covenant with David, and if you'll read the story, you'll find that, that uh, he really took it very far. He gave David his position. He draped his, his royal garments over, over uh, David. He gave him his sword. He said, look, here's, here's my protection. Here's my power that I have as a mighty warrior. Do you know why Jesus left heaven and came to this earth? He did so to make a blood covenant for you and me. Lord Jesus, upon that cross, it happened 2,000 years ago when he shed his blood, was making a blood covenant with the almighty God and the sons of Adam. On that cross, the blood of God and the blood of mankind were mingled. And when Christ died for you, Christ made a blood covenant for you. Thank God for his precious blood. Thank God. And friend, when you enter into a blood covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ, in essence, what you do is you bow your knee and you say that any position in life that I have, Lord, it now belongs to you. Uh, you put all that you are and all that you have at his disposal. And when you enter into a blood covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ, you hand over your protection. You, you, you give up uh, your right to defend yourself and you trust him to protect you. When you enter into a blood covenant with the Lord Jesus, you give him your power, you give him the ability of your hands, you give him the, the courage of your heart, you offer all that you are to him. My friend, the subject of the Bible is that blood covenant. Adrian Rogers said, you cut the Bible anywhere and it will bleed. There is a scarlet thread of redemption that runs through this Bible. and It is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And friend, when you and I understand what we are and what we have in this blood covenant, and it'll give us an incredible boldness, an incredible boldness. No longer will we be mastered by our feelings and by our emotions. Now we can stand on fact. We can stand on a covenant. You can stand on something. It will give you faith, a boldness in your faith and in your position with Jesus Christ. Thank God for the cross, friend. Thank God. For the blood, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. So I trust that you know him as Lord and Savior today. If you don't, if you don't, get in contact with me. Call someone that you trust that can take God's word and show you how you can enter into this blood covenant with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, happy Good Friday to all of you. Uh, it's Friday, but Easter's coming. He doesn't stay in that tomb, does he? He arises from the dead, and when he does, he defeats death, he defeats sin. Praise God for that. We look forward to discussing that with you more Sunday morning for our Easter services. We love you in the Lord. If we can do anything for you, reach out to us and let us know. God bless you. Bye-bye.